You're listening to the Beat Motel Zine podcast, and we need to warn you that we use words like sh**, bollocks, scrotics, fuck, anarcho-syndicalist, and c**, and we don't normally beat those words out, apart from the word c**, because we're not total animals. Now, we know, as well as you, that your children can hear these words on any street in Britain, possibly any street anywhere in the world, but we also appreciate that you may not want to invite these words into your home if you have children or sensitive pets nearby whilst listening to this podcast. So listener discretion is advised. That being said, if your children aren't allergic to hearing words like f***, <coughs> shit, f***, <coughs> buttocks, or hind penis, they might learn something from listening to this podcast, although probably not because the quality of our educational content is quite poor. So there you go, fuckers, buckle in, and let's get started. Hello, cool kids, listen to this. Yep, that's the sound of my front door. I'm going to see Henge and Dog Show at St Stephen's in Ipswich. I'm going to make this intro really brief because it is pissing it down with rain and blowing a hoolie, as we say in Suffolk. So, stay tuned. And next time I speak to you, I will be considerably damper. I forgot to mention it's Andrew here. Although, if you listen to Beat My Tell podcast before, you'll probably have recognised I don't have the lovely sonorous voice of Dr Sam. Um, this might be the first gig review I've done for wearing trousers. It's suddenly turned cold here in the UK, so I'm not wearing shorts for the first time. Oh man, it is raining. I always see a lot of slugs on the pavements when it rains this heavily. I wonder if they all just lurk in the sidelines and make a break for it each time it starts persisting it down. Oh, I assume it's dog show, just wield some kind of apparatus in the middle of the room. Symbols and symbols and drums. And they're dressed as dogs, which again, kind of what I was expecting. Everyone's a bit confused. It's very bright. So that voice you just heard is Hannah from Interesting Times Gang, who uh, didn't realise I was recording, so sorry about that, Hannah. Sorry, okay. But how would you begin to describe what we've just seen? Um, two people dressed as dogs, one playing drums, one playing synths. Yeah, that, that's fairly comprehensive, but just mechanically it was quite impressive. They kind of wheeled out what looked like the sort of frame you might see at a hotel with suits hanging on. Yeah, no wires. No impressive. wires. Must have had a big battery. And we'll, um, Hannah's a fellow synth geek, we're trying to figure it out. They had an Ovation base station. I saw that. An Ovation... Um, I think a MIDI controller, and the guy on the other side had an SPD pad, Roland SPD pad, and you saw a chaos pad. Didn't chaos you? pad, yeah, for I guess vocal distortions. There's one, there's one other synth we can't quite identify, but no, it was under the, the desk thingy, and we couldn't quite see it. But you know. I'll ask uh, Gareth, my uh, Gareth from these rent times, doing the sound tonight, so he yeah. would have he would have seen that intimately. But it was good fun, though. It was good fun, and I thought if you have a shtick that strong, so dog costumes 
strangely staring dead eyes, which I kept thinking of looking at me. If you've got a stick that strong, I think you have to really flesh it out. And I wasn't convinced they had, because you have to have such a high amount of crowd participation. Until they go everyone running around in a circle at the end, then I thought, okay, I still think the best is yet to come from a dog show. Yeah, I mean, it's all, regardless of instruments, it is always hard to keep it sonically interesting as a two piece. Um, you know, be you the kind of guitar and drum kit, you know, blues duo or synth duo. Actually, I tell a lie, it's sonically interesting generally if you're like, you know, the erasures of this world. <laughs> Duos have so done fairly well. Arrange yeah. it, pet job. But, but that's kind of different. But It's, it's not different because you've got to have really strong songs. Yes. You can't rely on the gimmick. But, but this, this was gravy, so quite repetitive, good to dance to, and a few moments of real sonic interestingness. Uh, was it consistent? Who can say? I'd, I'd be interested to hear what the recordings sound like. I'd love to know how long they've been going for because I think there's... there's yeah, I still think there's more to come there. I hope so. Cool, thank you, Hannah. What are you going to ask? Well, I'm here with Cab from These Are End Times, and you said something during Dog Show that I thought was quite, quite, quite good. What did you remember what you said? I said, when we're going to do our gig on the 9th of December, what are you going to dress as, Andrew? What kind of animal are you going to be? You fucking did. You said it was a bit Felix Dope here. <laughs> but you didn't say if that was a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, yeah, I did. I said, no, I said, the gig was absolutely cute as hell. I don't want to swear. I don't know where this is going, but um, it was really cute. But it made me think of Felix Sopir, Clacton Pier, and it was like dum dum chin dum 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 dum And that's okay. But the cutest thing about me doing that little manoeuvre is all the little—it's all loads of older white guys who are really cute. Let's get real. It is. I love them all. I love you all. And they're all doing that dum dum chin dum 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 chin dum dum dum. School disco dance. If I give you some little flyers for the gig, would you hand them out? Yes, I will. Thanks. That's, that's, that's Rocky from These Are End Times. Skill. That's my skill set. <laughs> that's Rocky from These Are End Times asking Cad from These Are End Times to hand out flyers. Hey, thanks, Cad. Um, <laughs> that's not my skill set. There's loads of people here dressed in interesting ways, very much like um, some of the festivals I've played locally, and I, I like it. It's always a good crowd. It's a certain type of crowd that I'm struggling to describe. But I'd say Osric Tentacles t-shirts would be a good start. I'm here with my mate Rod, who um, I've known for a while. You put me on before. You put, put some good gigs on. And you, uh, you were the photographer for Psychic TV. And you've got a new project. And you said you're recording tomorrow. Where are you recording? Well, we're recording. We're called Dreamstigators. And we're recording a live track on the A14 going over the Orwell Bridge. I uh, yeah, just right. Send us some links, and I'll, I'll share share it out. How did that come about? Um, it came about talking to a friend, and we wanted to do something slightly different. I think you've succeeded already. <laughs> no, you haven't executed yet. Anyway. There's an awed hush, so I think the band might be about to start. You haven't got to say anything, maybe. No, he's just shaking his head. Somebody's come on stage with a plasma ball on their head and you can hear a 303. So I might not have been that far off with Osric tentacles. There's a lot of masks and everyone's very excited. Hey, how are you feeling now? Okay, yeah. yeah I'm are you a little surprised that now we're uh, we've left Earth and we're on the zero? You're not floating around? Zero G's? Zero G's are good. No, don't worry, that's, uh, that's a trick question, see. Um, for health and safety reasons, we installed a, a gravity simulator in St. Stephen's Church, so that when we take off, you know, your drinks don't go everywhere, so. Health and safety? Can I have a applause for that? Can we use for Especially in space! Yes, indeed, that uh, space travel, you know, we do a lot of that. A lot of space travel, so you know, you're in safe hands with experts here, yes, yes indeed. Uh, it's not always, uh, it's not always fun, because sometimes you've got to travel a vast distance to get to the next thing, you know. So sometimes you can get a little dull, you know, on the spaceship, you get a little dull. Hop into the cryogenic freezer if you want to skip out a few weeks, I do that sometimes, but it's a bit chilly, it's not always what you want to do. Can't be uncomfortable in that, the first five minutes at least. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's, 
there's, there's, a bit of, there's a few things to do. Sometimes we play a bit of music, don't we? That was blue shit. And that's what we're going to do for this journey that we're all taking. But uh, yeah, there is often a, a, a sensation, a feeling that can sometimes uh, feels just like it, it grows inside you, it builds up a little bit. It's a sensation, it's a phenomenon known as Wanderlust! I think that little interview more than anything else will explain what we've done about this. <laughs> it always ends up being something about toilets in these episodes. Um, I've gone into the luxury cubicle, uh, otherwise known as the disabled cubicle here, and the guy coming out said, held the door open, he said, oh, it stinks of sweat in there, I just want to let you know it's not me. I've got no idea who he is. He could have been doing press-ups in here or anything. I don't know why he felt the need to defend himself. I'm outside uh, for a bit of breath of fresh air and I'm going to go back to my normal theory of um, there's a certain amount of time that's long enough for a band however brilliant and wild they are the, God, the sonics of this band are absolutely remarkable um, but I'm not going to feel massively bad by saying that <laughs> not for me, which is a horrible phrase but there's a lot of people very, very much enjoying themselves there's a lot of bird shit outside this church I'm in the toilet and I'm going to do the review from here. So Henge are uh, fucking masterful, just remarkable. I, I don't think I've seen a band that holds the crowd and gives you that 2am on the last day of a festival feels so well. Um, for me, it slightly feels like being at a party that everyone else is in on something and I like, haven't quite figured out what's going on. But that's nothing bad on Henge at all. Their craft and their stagemanship and the way they're holding the crowd in the palm of the hand is just a joy to behold. It really is. I like the flashcards they brought up in the last song. And there you go, they are done. So I'm going to step out of the toilet so you can hear some of the applause. Thank you for listening to Beat Motel, review and all that shit. Set for a small venue. Yeah. It is. Sorry, that's Gareth. <laughs> From times. I won't play you on any of this. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'll be listening. Yeah, very, very good. They've got a fucking masterful kind of stagecraft and everything else. They were great. I, I kind of liked. You're, you, you, no, not often, but whenever bands come in character, they don't generally keep that character up. Or they haven't kind of 
work the character through enough that in between songs yeah. you kind of go yeah they could be bloody aliens couldn't they just the way that he was talking and you know struggling with the language struggling in inverted commas did, did they of arrive on the venue in character no no so I, I know exactly where they're from <laughs> where are they from <laughs> oh no am I spoiling you know, I'm well, going to press stop clearly from different Probably. planets <laughs> with Simon from End Times in the pissing rain for a very short review of Henge what do you think? I thought they really entertaining but I'm, as a fan of Gong and uh, and that kind of uh, psych rock I thought they were, they were sort of like they were a guitarist and some brass away from being brilliant so oh. I mean, they just needed there's a lot of chip tune stuff going on there it really hasn't stopped <laughs> which was, was was interesting for a couple, but I, I don't, it doesn't hold my interest for an entire set you know that kind of um, they need to change the keyboard sound a bit but I think I think it was two o'clock in the morning after like Sunday night at a festival yeah I mean like a small festival I've played like tiny little festivals and that would be like the release of kind of like yeah okay let's just go with it yeah I think yeah I think I think but, but I think that there was potential there for more to be unleashed you know, I think the, the, the front man's incru- is, is obviously very good I love the whole concept the whole thing um but I, just, I, 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 want, I want more cardiacs, I want more gong, you know? But maybe that's just me. I think that, that's kind of my conclusion, that for me, it's, it's not massively some, something that, that connects with me, but I look at them and just go, whoa, shit, they've got it. They've got yeah. it going on. Yeah, yeah, they're they're right. Right. Yeah, they yeah. absolutely have, they have. So we're also here with... Oh, Simon. Simon. Oh, sorry, guys, am I interrupting? No, no two, two oh, Simons. No, 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 he's yes. Simon. Your yeah, name another is... another Simon. Another yes. Simon, yeah, absolutely, okay. yeah. So what, what, can you give me a 30-second review? A 30-second review of tonight. It, it was absolutely, yeah, Cardiacs, absolutely. Um, I love the sort of space poetry in between, which was very reminiscent of Hawkwind. The change, <laughs> oh, God, of, yeah. the change of sort of time signatures and everything was great. The rapport with the audience, the whole kind of uh, the concept of being a travelling band from outer space really worked. But musically, I thought they were absolutely bang on as well. Oh, musically, they're astonishing. Really, astonishing. really good. Really good. I really good. disagree with every, everything you said. Oh, come in here, come in here, come in here, come in here. What's your name? My name's Matt. Matt, Matt. So, your, your 30 second review of Hinge? I mean, you're wearing the hoodie. So I literally, like, like or you're my, really cold. my friend's friend uh, basically told me about it like about three days ago. Never heard of them before. Came down here. I don't usually buy like things, but like. They absolutely smashed it. I thought it was amazing. Loved it. Loved it. Like, had a great time. And so I thought, I'm going to contribute to them because they were amazing. Good Fuck, we, we need a lot absolutely. more people like you going to gigs. Like, yeah, have yeah. a sticker look. This is, this is the uh, podcast you'll be appearing on. Oh, I'm going to be on a podcast? Yeah, I've been recording you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> right, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe and all that fucking awesome. shit. Awesome. I'm, okay, so I'm, some, somebody just walked up and told me about the concept of armpitting. What's armpitting? What's your name? My name's Andrew. <laughs> this is with Beat Motel I'm not going to tell you my name. I'm, I'm Carol the Mad Reggae Girl. Cool, cool stuff. So what's armpitting? It's when you're, you haven't finished your drink and it's, they're chucking you out of the pub. So you put your drink under your arm and walk out, but hopefully not with one of their glasses. Oh, right. I've got a plastic one, so I'm, I'm okay. She's done it. I, I, we won't reveal her name. Well, we'll, we'll, I'll have her anonymity. So what is this for? Well, thank you very much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press stop and then I'll tell you what it's for. Okay.